Hi, I'm Kia Miyakanatis, and this is NPR's Book of the Day. Today, we're chatting with a very well-known name in the book world, Margaret Atwood. She's back with a new collection of short stories titled Old Babes in the Wood. The tales range from a seance with George Orwell to a story that flips the plot of one of her most popular books, Handmaid's Tale, on its head. What if men were the gender that needed to be controlled? NPR's Layla Fadel talks with Atwood about telling stories of people at their worst, and also sometimes at their best. Margaret Atwood has always been a keen observer of life. Writing is what we do, and storytelling is what human beings do, and every single person that you will ever meet has got a story of my life, which they're constantly revising. In her new short story collection, Old Babes in the Wood, Atwood has characters modeled after herself and her late husband. She also writes of the fantastical. Her story, titled Free for All, has parallels to perhaps her best-known work, adapted into a TV series, The Handmaid's Tale. It is a kind of companion piece to, to Handmaid, so flip it over and see what it would be like if it were, in fact, men who had to be controlled in their personal lives, for their own good, of course. If you could break down that story a little bit. So it's it's a killer disease. A killer sexually transmitted disease. So this is written right in the middle of the first wave of AIDS. Mm. Uh, and the solution that society has come up with is uh, you would have to have arranged marriages and you would have to have sexually pure uh, participants, otherwise everybody would just die. Yeah. Um, so they so they go about it, and the story is set fairly far down the line when a hierarchical chain of command has developed, and it's told from one of the point of view of one of the arrangers of these marriages, and the different um, because of course it's all gated communities. You can't let people just go running around. So it's from told from that point of view. And like you said, the men are the ones that have to be controlled. They both do, but but men also. As well as women. Exactly. So going back to the age of, of European aristocracy, when royal houses married off their kids to one another, mm. it's a similar idea, except they were doing it for the money. Yeah, because in the story, there there's these creation of houses and marrying kids off to each other for children. That would certainly happen. It would be a practical solution to a very difficult problem. Also in your other stories, like your conversation, your fictional conversation with George Orwell, there's some poking fun also about the generational shifts and the things you can and can't say anymore. As a writer, I'm just wondering what you think about these conversations about what can and can't be said, what can and can't be written, what can and can't be... That's been, that's been going on for a very long time. This yeah. is just a new iteration of it. So, having been a victorious, I'm here to tell you that some people felt in polite conversation that you shouldn't use the word leg. Oh, wow. And you also shouldn't use the word chicken breast. <laughs> chicken breast? <laughs> well, it was a breast, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> you have this specific exchange with the novelist George Orwell when he talks about women being trifling, women writers. Yes. And you say, oh, you can't say that anymore. That's considered trivializing. Now. Well, um, you can't say it anymore because it is quite demonstrably not true anymore. Right. Um, so that's one reason you can't say anymore. Where did that so, a conversation come from? The conversation came from a magazine called Inc. I N Q U E, mm -hmm. which has a series called The Dead Interview. And as a living writer, you get invited to do the dead interview with any dead writer of your choice. Why did you choose George Orwell? A natural for me. He ruined my life when I was about nine or ten because I read Animal Farm, thinking it was going to be like the wind in the willows, and not knowing anything about Trotsky or Stalin or any of those things at all. So I just thought it was about these animals, and they were so mean. They are so mean to the horse. He was an early... Influence because I next read 1984, probably about when it came out, paperback edition, which I still have, lurid cover. Everything had lurid covers in the 
in the 50s, and I think a lot of people read world literature thinking they were reading a going to get a steamy sex book and instead got War and Peace. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I, wrote, I read him as a teenager and um, really quite influential on me. So he was hugely influential on in your writing? Eventually, yes. Not, not immediately, but when we get to The Handmaid's Tale, for sure. When I think about Free For All, when I think about Handmaid's Tale, when I think about other things in your writing, there's a lot that's very terrifying about humanity and familiar, even if it seems slightly far off. Well, not as far off as it used to feel. Why do you build the world you do, observe people in this way at our worst? Also at your best as well, uh, because that's what people are. Yeah. We do have a worst, and if you spend much time reading the newspapers, you'll you'll read a lot about it because it's my whole job. <laughs> oh, then you know. Yeah, the worst catches the attention more quickly than best. You've been a professional writer for for decades now. When you think really about a very very long time. <laughs> well, that's what you've done. That's your life. And I and I wonder when you think about your writing in your 20s and 30s and the world that you wrote in in your 20s and 30s and the world that you write in today, how different is it? A lot of material differences and technological differences and also what was on people's minds. And that always is changing all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can make a timeline of these concerns, interests, and changes in style, but it is always changing. And today, when you think about the world you write in? When you're writing um, a story, it's either going to be set in the present, which is never really possible because by the time it's published, that's going to be the past. Mm -hmm. It takes a year or two. So it's either going to be in the future where you have free scope. The future contains whatever I say it does. Or the past where you have to be pretty particular about getting your details right because somebody's going to call you on it if they're wrong. Margaret Atwood, her latest short story collection is called Old Babes in the Wood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 